Hi, everyone, and welcome to the first of our micro lecture videos. These first three videos are going to talk about the different things we want to think about, look for, and analyze while reading poetry. The fourth video will then talk about how we can pull all those ideas together into a form, an explication essay. An explication is an unpacking. It's a form of analysis that looks at every component of a poem or a prose passage and tries to understand how it is all working together. In doing an explication, you start out with the big picture and work your way down to the smallest of details. In this video, we'll talk about the big picture of the poem, what is often referred to as the dramatic situation of the poem. We don't often think about poetry in dramatic terms. Many of the poems you're familiar with are probably lyrical poems in which an unidentified voice reflects upon some idea. Take, for example, Shakespeare's sonnet 16. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love, which alters when it alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. Oh, no. It is an ever-fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken. Loves not time's fool. Though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come, love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error, and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. What's going on in this poem? Nothing, really. Someone is talking about the nature of love. A lot of poems are like this, and that's fine. But even so, we want to ask the question and try to see what aspects of drama are present in the poems we read. So, when we're thinking about the dramatic situation of a poem, there are five questions you want to try to answer. One very important thing to remember with this kind of analysis when doing a textual explication, your only source material is the literary text that you are explicating. You don't bring in any other outside sources. You don't do any extra research. A textual explication is a pure and very focused kind of analysis. Your only evidence is to support your ideas is what's going on on the page you are analyzing. We start with the biggest question of all. What is this poem about? That's a tough question because it's pretty vague. It's also pretty dangerous because it's the kind of question that someone can answer too easily. What is Sonnet 16 about? It's about love, the end. The best way I've found to avoid that vagueness is to use a template to answer this question. When explicating a poem, try to think, complete this sentence. This poem dramatizes the conflict between blank and blank. What happens when we use this template? A, we're thinking in dramatic terms, and B, we're thinking about conflict. So we could say this, Shakespeare's Sonnet 116 dramatizes the conflict between logic and passion, the mind and the heart of a lover. Notice, of course, that no physical conflict takes place in the poem. What we are looking for are the ideas that have been put into conflict in opposition to one another. Let's take a look at a more contemporary example. Here's Claude McKay's If We Must Die. If we must die, let it not be like hogs, hunted and pinned in an inglorious spot. While round us bark the mad and hungry dogs making a mock at our cursed lot. If we must die, oh let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. And to the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us, though dead. Oh kinsmen, we must meet the common foe. Though far outnumbered, let us show us brave, and for the thousand blows deal one death blow. Though what beneath us lies an open grave, like men will face the murderous cowardly pack. Pressed to the wall, dying but fighting back. This poem hints at a more physical conflict, but it's not about an actual battle. What is it most concerned with? Pause the video and 
and see if you can complete the template. Claude McKay's poem, If We Must Die, dramatizes the conflict between blank and blank. How'd you do? Okay, we will come back to the, this big question later on. It's good to try to answer it at the beginning, but as with any thesis, you'll want to revisit it after you've completed your full analysis. The rest of the dramatic analysis portion of an explication is pretty straightforward. Consider who is the speaker of the poem. Note that the answer here is never the poet. We are thinking about the poem as a dramatization. When we read fiction or plays, we talk about the characters, what they do and say, not the author. We want to do the same with poems. Who is speaking? What do we know about the voice that is uttering the words of the poem? What kind of character has the poet created? Some poems give us lots of information about the speaker. Other poems do not. But as you read and reread the poem, try to find some clues as to what kind of person is talking. The speaker of Shakespeare's Sonnet 116 is someone who has been through the turmoil of love probably more than once. What evidence do I have to say so? Well, he speaks with great conviction throughout the poem. What about the speaker of McKay's poem? He's a leader, someone trying to rally a troop faced with certain loss, even death. Note that I'm only using what's in the poems to support my thinking here. There's no room for speculation in this kind of analysis. You also want to think about who's being spoken to in the poem. Who is the speaker addressing? Who is the listener? Do we have any clue from Shakespeare as to who the speaker is addressing? No, not really. What about with McKay? Here we have some sense, don't we? The speaker, this leader, is addressing a group of people who are about to face certain death. We don't know the specifics, but it's clear from the speaker's use of the pronoun we that he or she is addressing a group of like-minded individuals, all of whom will suffer the same sad fate. I'm being pretty brief here. We'll all spend time in class exploring these ideas in greater detail, but I hope you're starting to get the picture, so to speak. Finally, in terms of the dramatic, you want to think about the action in the setting of the poem. Where and when are these words being spoken? Does the poet give us any sense of time or place? Is any movement described? Often, again, the answer is no, but we want to ask the questions and look for those details. We don't get much of anything in terms from our two examples. While it's tempting to imagine the speaker of McKay's poem on some battlefield rallying the troops before a great battle, we just don't have that evidence in the text. Again, there's no room for speculation and explication. Okay, so there we have the beginning of our explication process, how we consider the dramatic situation of the poem. The next video will explore how we can analyze the form and structure of the poem. Thanks for watching.